Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you something different, something pretty cool that I got access to recently. It's called GitHub Copilot for CLI. And it's basically a terminal program that will translate natural language into terminal commands. So if anything like me, you've probably used Linux before. Maybe you've never used Linux before, or a terminal for that matter. And you may know how to get around, like, you know, change directories and look at files and stuff like that. But you may not know how to do anything beyond that without having to Google it, right? So let's say searching for a file, deleting files, um, anything more complex than that. Now with this cool program called Copilot for CLI, command line interface, essentially you can tell it exactly what you want to do and it will translate it into a shell command. So the way it works is basically you have three commands, three different variations. So you have question mark, question mark, you can provide any like regular sentence in English and it will try and translate it into a shell command or a terminal command. Then you have git question mark, it'll basically do the same thing but translate it into something git related. So you can say uh, revert my branch by two commits and it will do that for you. And then finally you have gh question mark which is uh, translating language into GitHub CLI commands which I've never messed with uh, GitHub CLI but um, it's something for you if you want to use it. But let me show you some examples real quick before we try it ourselves. If we just look at list.js files, you do question mark, question mark, list.js files, then it will try and interpret that and convert it into a shell command. And it will also explain to you how it works, like what the command is doing. So it'll explain like the different uh, parameters and whatnot that you provide into the command, which is awesome. And then it'll ask you if you want to run the command, revise it or cancel it. So pretty simple. Um, here's another example, make a get request with curl. I would not know how to do that just by my memory, I just don't use it enough. Um, so it'll basically do that for you, which is really cool. And you can add on to it by doing revisions and stuff like that. And of course, like I said, there's also the git version. So git question mark list all commits and it'll translate that into an actual command for you to run on the terminal. And yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So I got access to this recently. It's a technical preview, meaning it's not actually like a, a real product that they're selling to everybody. It's just something that you have to join a waitlist for. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below. You can join the waitlist and try it out yourself if you want to. But today I'll just be showing you guys how it works, what you can do with it, and why it's going to be such a game changer for developers whenever it comes out, if it does. And with that said, before we take a look at that, I want to show you guys something called GitHub Next. This is basically um, a suite of different uh, prototypes or technical previews for different uh, AI related products. So GitHub Copilot for CLI, GitHub Copilot for voice. So you can literally use your voice to code and use uh, and, and stuff like that. And then you have Copilot for docs for generating documentation, for generating pull requests. Pretty cool, right? And then you have these other ones here, which are basically uh, basically prototypes or napkin sketches. And then of course we have GitHub Copilot, which you may have already used or heard about. It's a basically a way to, basically as you're writing code within your IDE, it'll give you suggestions for code. So you can you know, code faster and not have to look stuff up, just like this. So Copilot for CLI is very, very similar to GitHub Copilot if you ever, if you ever have messed with that before, okay? But anyway, hopefully you're excited for this. Let's go ahead and check it out, see what we can do. Okie dokie, so I've got a terminal open here. This is with my Ubuntu server. I just SSH into it. So now I'm in the terminal for it and we can start using it. I've already installed GitHub Copilot on here, GitHub Copilot CLI rather. Once you are given access to it, the email that they send you will give you a link to the NPM package for it. So it comes with installation instructions and stuff like that. It's a pretty simple process. You just install a package and then log in with your, your GitHub uh, account to verify that you have access, right? And then now we can use it. So to use it, the first command is just a double question mark. So you do that and then you tell it what you're trying to do. So let's start with something simple, such as creating a new file. That's one of the most basic things you can do, right? So we'll do question mark, question mark, and then we'll do create a new file named bob.txt. There we go. And now it should generate a command. So touch bob.txt, that is correct, of course. And then the cool thing though, is that it gives you an explanation so you can also learn along the way as it's generating these commands for you. So it says touch is, a, is used to create a new file. Bob.txt is the name of the file to create. And so it'll give us these options here. If you use your arrow keys to run it, revise it, or cancel. So let's go ahead and run it. Press yes to confirm. And boom. So it just said it executed it. So if we do ls now to list the files in the directory, we can see that we have bob.txt. Pretty cool, right? So now let's do um, write a poem into bob.txt. Let's see if it can do that. I don't know if it can generate a poem, but we'll try. Roses are red, violets are blue. <laughs> okay, there we go. So echo, roses are red, violets are blue into bob.txt. So we're going to go and run this. Yes. And there we go. So print the contents of bob.txt. I'm pretty sure I know how to do that myself, but yeah, there we go. I'll just use cat. Okay. 
but there we go. So, but as you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty awesome, right? You just tell exactly what you're trying to do in human language and it tries to interpret that and generate a command for you and give you an explanation, which is even more powerful. Now, let's say we wanna do something a little more advanced. So generally speaking, they don't really recommend that you provide a giant prompt to it the first time. They recommend that you give it something relatively simple and then add onto it using the revision feature. So we could say something like uh, create a new user so that we'll figure out how to do that. So sudo add user username. So let's go ahead and revise it. And I want the username to be Billy Bob. So now it sort of adds onto the query. As you can see, it says create a new user and I want the username to be Billy Bob. And it says sudo add user Billy Bob. And let's see if we can add this, uh, make it more advanced. So we can say revise, give them sudo admin privileges privileges because I would have I would have no idea how to do that so let's see sudo add user Billy Bob sudo okay um, I just have to assume that's correct so let's go ahead and run this now why it says the user Billy Bob does not exist well that's a fail so let's go ahead and try again so we'll say create a new user named Billy Bob let's see if it does it right this time run this command boom and there we go okay adding user Billy Bob adding new group Billy Bob, adding new user Billy Bob. Um, so I added it to the home directory as well. So this is where you can find the files for Billy Bob or where they can work in. That's their working directory, I believe. So maybe you just got confused about the part where I told it to add the pseudo admin privileges. Maybe I just added too much information for it to figure out what to do. And maybe I confused it. It's not perfect as you can see here. Okay, so now we should have a new user Billy Bob. So let's go ahead and give them admin privileges again. So give the user Billy Bob pseudo privileges. And my understanding is that pseudo privileges allows you to do everything, right? So give the user Billy Bob pseudo privileges. Let's see what it gives us. There we go. So sudo user mod, blah, blah, blah. And it's telling you exactly what it's doing. So sudo is used to run a command with elevator rights. User mod is to modify user accounts. Adds the user Billy Bob to the sudo group. Okay, cool. Let's try this out. There we go. So hopefully Billy Bob now has pseudo permissions to be able to do whatever they want. Awesome. And yeah, so you can just pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, I think it also just depends on your, your knowledge of Linux as well, because you can do some more complex stuff maybe if you know what to ask for. I think one of the challenges with this uh, at the moment is just knowing how to ask it questions. So that's something you need to sort of figure out. Um, maybe they'll make it easier to sort of interpret commands in the future. But sometimes when I provide a input, it doesn't know exactly what I'm asking for or it gets confused along the way, okay? So let's just do a few more commands so you can see how cool this is. Let's say make my terminal green. I don't know if I can do that, we'll try that. Cool, yes. Now my terminal's green, awesome. I wanna try something a little more complex. So let's just cd to root. And I wanna do something like search for files larger than 100 megabytes and sort them by size. So hopefully this will work, let's see what happens. Now this is an example of where this sort of technology comes in very handy. Um, coming up with this command on your own is nearly impossible unless there's some sort of Linux god that uses Linux on the daily. I would never be able to come with, up with something like this without Googling it, I just don't use Linux enough, or not even just Linux, of course this is just uh, a piece of software for shell commands in general. So if you use Mac OS, it should work on there because they're both Unix based. Linux and Mac OS are, they both share a terminal that is sort of Unix based. So it would work on there um, as well. I did try this um, on my Windows machine. Um, it did not work. I didn't have any luck with it. Um, it may work for other people. Maybe I just did something wrong, but I did not have luck using Windows with this. But I would expect this to be more useful for just, you know, uh, like regular terminals that are Unix based anyway. So that is why I created an Ubuntu server just to test this out um, and run it. So yeah, so let's go ahead and run this though. So run this command, yes. And let's see what happens. And it looks like it did the job pretty well. It's all sorted by size. So it's pretty much like ascending towards you. And then they're all over hundred megabytes. So pretty cool. Um, so it gave everything pretty much correctly. Now let's go ahead and try out the Git feature of GitHub Copilot CLI. So instead of using double question mark, we're gonna use git question mark and then tell it what we're trying to do. And it should try and interpret that into a git commands. So let's say that we wanna do, well, I, well, first of all, I know that I have a repository in the current directory that I'm in. So let me go ahead and remove that. So remove the current repo. 
So hopefully it should be able to do that for us. So there we go, run that, boom. And now if I do ls-la, there is no longer a git repo in here. So if you see a, a file with .git, that's how you know you have a git repo, of course. Um, so let's see what else we can do. Let's try um, git question mark, create a new repo and switch to the dev branch. Let's see if it can do that. I'm kind of chaining together two different things. So it might have issues. I've never seen the, that doesn't seem right, git switch. I've never seen that before. Maybe it's different. Usually you would use git checkout to do something like that, but let's try it out. Yes. Okay, I guess you can use git switch. I did not know that. So we have created a new repository and then switched to the dev branch. Pretty cool. Now, obviously those are the most basic things you can do with git. This may be more useful for more complex stuff. So we can do something like git question mark, uh, revert my revert the branch by two commits, something like that. I don't really have any commits at the moment, but um, that would be an example of where that might be useful. So it explains it, git reset, recess the current branch to a previous commit. Hard means that we also discard any changes made to the files in the working directory. Head two specifies that we reset the commit to two before the current one. So looks right to me. It's probably gonna fail just because we don't have any commits at the moment, yeah. But you get the point. So this is how you can use the git version of this. Um, it's pretty much the exact same thing as the double question mark part of it, um, except that it's more tailored for git specifically. So you can do git related stuff. Um, yeah. And then of course, like I said, there's also gh question mark, which is for GitHub CLI commands. I don't ever use that. I don't know what it is actually. But if you use GitHub CLI, you can use this to help you come up with those commands. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, you're excited to try this out yourself. If you want to see me make more content like this, where I just look at different, you know, software or programs or different stuff that's up and coming with AI and other technology, then let me know. Leave a like and say something in the comment section below if you want to see me make more videos like this. I will show you guys whatever I can find. I have a few ideas already. So with that said, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more, and peace.